Hey guys, Nate here from PlayYourCord.com. Today we're going to examine your split step and figure out if it's causing you to lose matches by killing your reaction time. Alright guys, today we're talking about the split step and whether it's killing your reaction time causing you to lose unnecessary matches. All right, this, this instruction is for a player court 70 and up, which is the equivalent to a 4.0 USDA rating. Why are we giving you the player court rating? Because it's part of our community. If you're not familiar with it, please just hit the link below. We're gonna match you up with evenly skilled players. We're gonna give you instruction. And then if you need additional help, we're gonna help you find a pro in your area. All right, so check out the link below. Um, without further ado, let's talk about what's happening in your split step that may be killing your reaction time. All right, we all know that the split step is, is something that's done. It's an athletic move to where once our legs are set underneath our shoulders, it's a spring, right? We're getting into this split step to get the legs ready and the body to move in a direction, right? All right, and the way this happens is it's spring-loaded. Obviously, with the split step, if we're landing flat on our heels, there's really no spring involved. It's really important that we're on the balls of our feet, which are up towards the toes, not a little ballerina, not, not tink tinkle toes here, all right? But we're landing on the balls of our feet and having this spring, all right? That is not incorrect. That's not the error that we're talking about. One of them is that stop step where we're landing on the heels. But partly what we see is that players, when they need to change direction, it doesn't benefit them to come back down with their chest squared up forward to where the ball came from. All right. So we'll see a lot of players that are moving out to their forehand and they're hitting this split step and then having to turn and pivot out to the ball. And what's happening is it's, it's just causing a delay. It's causing too much time to get to the ball. So what we're gonna introduce, what we're gonna talk about today is the flow step. And what this flow step is, is as I do the split step, I'm going to take my hips and specifically the leg, my outer leg that's going in the direction of the ball, and I'm gonna turn. And what this will look like as I go into the split step is I'll turn this leg out so as soon as I land, I'm moving out to the ball. All right, so I'm gonna grab a box here and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna illustrate what this is going to look like. And because the distance from the ground is higher, you're gonna be able to see a little bit better of what this flow step looks like. Once we demonstrate that, we'll get Scott out here, we'll do some hand fed, and we'll just show you the basic difference of why this affects reaction time so much. All right, so as you can see, I've got a box. It doesn't really matter what the box is, guys. You can practice this at home, but this is definitely a tool that's gonna help. It's also really gonna illustrate the point of what the flow step should be. So as I stand up on the box, a basic split step, I would land on my toes here, all right? And you can see my, my hips, my knees, ankles, all the mobile joints are facing straight to the net. And when I say mobile, I'm not talking about 360. It just gives us the ability to make an adjustment and move in these dynamic, uh, in a dynamic manner. All right, so what the flow step, what we're talking about here, the minute that I recognize that I'm getting a forehand and I'm being pulled out wide, when I get to the split step, right as my opponent is, is, is hitting the ball, I'm entering the split step, and as I move, I'm turning my leg out. You can see this right leg has immediately, with the hip, I've turned it, and I'm, as I land, I'm gonna be able to move to this ball quicker. So the fix here with the flow step is going to be, I turn and immediately I'm off and running. Whereas what you're gonna be able to see here with the split step, it's delayed because I'm going into the split step and then I'm having to turn. I'm saving myself time. And I know this doesn't seem like it's, it's a lot, it's gonna make a big difference, like it's a lot of time, but it's pretty significant. And when we get really good at it, each time we have this split step, our change of direction is gonna be so much faster. All right, so we're gonna get Scott out here. We're gonna demo this now with a little hand fed and let you see the difference. All right guys, so we got Scott here. We're gonna work through a little bit of hand fed and we're gonna show you the split step and the way if I land with my hips and shoulders square to my opponent with me facing straight ahead about how I have to make the adjustment out wide to the ball after the split step and why that's inefficient. So I'm not hitting this ball. I'm just gonna show you the movement and kind of time it out when he's released the ball. This is the less efficient way. All 
All right, so we got two of those. I'm, there's nothing wrong with that split step, guys, if I was moving forward. If I was making my way into the net, that'd be fine. All right, or maybe even if I was going backwards, I could get away with it. But when the ball is pulled to the outer thirds of the court, specifically for a running forehand, the move has to be much different. So on these, watch specifically what's happening with my hip and the movement of my leg to get me into a position that I can immediately start running the minute my feet hit the ground. All right, so now guys, we're gonna go ahead and hop in and Scott's gonna give me a live feed where I can demo, I'm gonna demo the, the split step, the inefficient way, and then we'll hop into the flow step and just show you why it's a much quicker reaction out to the ball. Okay, so there we're taking a look at the split step versus the flow step. So guys, just remember, if you're getting pulled out wide into the outer thirds of the court, you wanna make this adjustment with the hip, getting the leg to start tracking in the direction that you're going to. The backhand would be the same exact thing that you're just getting the hip to track while you're in the air. So when you come back down to the ground, you can start moving in the direction of the ball, all right? Split step is totally fine if you're moving forward. Um, or if you're, you're just staying in a fairly small quadrant part of the court, not necessarily an issue there. This is just something in addition to the split step that may help you with your reaction time. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit like, hit subscribe, and take a second, check out the community. There's, it's offering a lot of great things. We're gonna match you up with players of your own skill level. There's even a, a resource to where we can match you up with a pro. If you'd like further information or maybe some of the things we've discussed or just something else entirely. All right, so hit the link below, check out the community, like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.